locally known as Galamse. The destruction of land and water bodies by this activity has reached alarming levels, prompting various stakeholders to call for drastic measures, including a possible state of emergency to care for this menace. Back in 2017, President Okufado made a bold statement declaring that he was willing to put his presidency on the line to fight Kalamse. Let's listen to what he had to say. I've heard it being said that uh, well, I should be careful. Some of, many of these people voted for me. And if I continue this exercise, perhaps they will not vote for me again. If, if by the grace of God I'm in, um, I, I'm in a position, my party allows me to go again and I have the health and everything to go again, that I'll not get it again. And I'll say to myself, well, this is a choice that all of us have to make as human beings. You do what you think is right, or do you do what you think will allow you to get along? I think that you do what you think is right. That is what you're required to do. Fortunately for me, in this fight, I have great allies. First of all, within my government, the people who are on the front line of that, some, all of them are here. The Minister for Environment, Science, Technology, and Innovation. The Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, the Minister for Water Resources and Sanitation, eminent Ghanaians, responsible Ghanaians, who have gone out of their way to lead this crusade. But from the beginning, they said something, which is the reason why you are here today. We cannot win this fight without the support of the traditional authorities of our country. Any serious social mobilization of, in, of Ghana since time immemorial, if you're not involved, it doesn't happen. If you, the chiefs of our country, are not involved, it doesn't happen. That was President Akufuado in 2017, outlining his commitment to the fight against illegal mining. But seven years later, how has the situation changed? Is the fight being won, or has Galamsey tightened its grips on Ghana's environment? Let's hear the thoughts of Ghanaians on how this issue has affected their lives and communities. So Galamse in Ghana has become a very Herculean task for government and um, agencies, CSOs, media professionals to tackle. It dates way back from 2012 or even before. And it has a lot of lasting effects in the area of health, agriculture, food security, look at um, health and the fights for the last eight years has been interesting because Galamse has now activities of Galamse has now increased largely um, many who blame it on the current government saying that the president the sitting president indicated that he was going to put his presidency on the line to fight Galamse and this is the eighth year going into another election and nothing seems to have changed it has rather, rather increased so the president should resign. That's all that he's supposed to do. That is all. Not that he failed. He made that projection by himself that his presidency is on the line. And now he has failed. So the only answer to any and everything is for the president to resign. Thank you. Almost eight years of the Akufa Dubaumia government and still with the issues of Kalamse, um, they failed the entire Ghanaian populace in the sense that um, you came making promises of fight in Kalamse and it has, it, it has been worse than ever. The rate at which Kalamse was previously and now, and to the extent that um, some of the ministers, some of his own people are involved in the Kalamse. It's just terrible. Our water bodies are just going bad, which is affecting our food production, affecting um, our health services. And even with the herbalist, like, I, don't, I just don't get it. Deforestation, everything. So now there's depletion of the ozone layer because of the cutting down of the trees all in the name of Kalamse, which is having a negative impact. They've totally failed Ghanaians. 
I think the Galamsey issue is very serious, and we need to fight this uh, menace as a as a national issue. But looking at how our waters are being polluted and our environment are being degraded, there's more for us to do as a country to, I mean, fight this before we get swallowed with it. So I think the government needs to put more effort, all hands to be on decks for us to, I mean, try our best and then get rid of it. Those were the voices of concerned Ghanaians highlighting the real impact of Galamsi. With us today to set the ball rolling on this issue are Aula Sewa, the founder and coordinator of Eco Cautious Citizens. She has been at the forefront of the campaign against Galamsi, advocating for urgent and effective measures to address the environmental destruction. We are also joined by Abeka Ebenezer, a member of the communication team of the ruling National Patriotic Party, MPP. He will share with us the government's stance on this matter and provide insights into the efforts made so far. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Aula, let me start with you. As someone deeply involved in the fight against Galamsi, what are your thoughts on the current state of the government's efforts? Are we seeing meaningful progress or are we in need of more drastic measures as some stakeholders are now calling for a state of emergency? It's terrible. We face what you call an existential threat. If things continue this way, we'll all become extinct. Our forest cover is on and going. And then to add insult to injury, we have passed EI-14 which declassifies parts of Hachimota Forest, the last remaining lands of the world. Our forest cover is going because of um, criminal activity, the illegal mining, and then we also have the poisoning of our water bodies in clear, broad daylight, whilst the authorities just stand idly by. We have an increase in kidney disease, in neurological disease, in cancers. We have uh, maternal deaths, still births, and uh, babies born with deformity. The situation is completely unacceptable. And uh, we can stop it today if the political will is there, if the chiefs will also do what they are supposed to do. The individuals are doing the best, but sometimes the illegal miners are heavily armed. So it's very difficult to even effect citizens' arrest. Some have tried, like in Assemblum and other areas, they have tried to effect citizens' arrest. A lot of the time, um, later on, the illegal miners are released. So there's a canker going on. And we are saying that what is going on is environmental terrorism. In wartime, when you poison the source of water, it's a war crime. So now we are fighting a war against environmental terrorists. And everybody, all right million Ghanaians, should come together because we have only one gun and we should fight this canker. Unfortunately, certain people have the um, security apparatus within which to fight the canker. Others don't. The journalists have done a fantastic job highlighting the canker. Ghana Water Company has for a long time been telling us that if we don't get our act together, they will not be able to continue treating the water. And recently we found out what happened in Cape Coast. Now I want to sound a note of caution. Even that when the water looks nice and clear, it doesn't mean it doesn't have mercury or cyanide in it because these are colorless. So we need to be on notice. That is why we should all come together and fight this canker. And indeed, we have all come together. You've had the uh, Catholic Bishops Conference. You've had the um, Christian Council. You have the GMA, the Ghana Medical Association. You've had UTAG. You've had organized labor, you've had the TUC, you've had the Muslim Council, environmental groups, everybody has come together and listed a set of steps, which if they are taken, will help us get rid of this camp. And I'll go over the steps. First of all, you need to declare a state of emergency. Having declared a state of emergency, drive out everybody from our forest reserves and our water bodies. Then there's a legislation, LI2462, which was passed by Parliament, a perverse legislation which allows mining and logging in forest reserves, including globally significant biodiversity areas. That law should be done away with. And then we said, pause 
or ban community mining. And why this is important is that we don't have a good regime of monitoring and enforcement. In some cases, we are actually allergic to enforcement. We have um, even the big companies. We have difficulty in monitoring them. How much more when you have thousands of illegal, I keep on saying illegal, small-scale miners or community mining. You can't monitor them. You are incapable of monitoring them. So how do you allow them to operate? And then you have the downright criminals who are just uh, causing mayhem because the law is not dealing with them. So this is the picture. We are facing an existential threat. Our forests, the lungs that we have are being uh, decimated. And then our water bodies, our water bodies are being poisoned with impunity. Thank you, Madam Aula. Ebenezer, you've heard from Madam Aula and the concerns of Ghanaians. But from the perspective of the ruling party, what has the government done to address these concerns? Is declaring a state of emergency a viable option? Okay, thank you very much. Mm. And good morning to you, as well as my co panel well, Let me start from this angle. Nobody's happy with how our water bodies is being destroyed or are being destroyed. Let me use that word. And we know perfectly well that today, in our, in our human lives, water is, is an essential part or aspect of the human lives. And today, if our water bodies are being destroyed due to small scale mining into brackets, galaxy, then the question that we will be asking ourselves is, then what is our next step or next level as a human being? Because we know perfectly what every human being can do that at least with water, we can live a very bit or longer without food. But when you have water, when you have water, you can live a, a, a very bit longer. But the question is, if today our water bodies are being destroyed, as a result of illegal mining in Gal into brackets, galaxy, then what is our next step or what is our future as citizens or human, human, human? And you see, I always say, to fight this canker, galaxy, it's a collective responsibility. It's not just a one person, one person or one man's approach. It's a collective responsibility. That is why we have the likes of O2 Force Age 2, trying to these two chiefs who are engaged in galaxy. He is helping because we need to the president who so put his or presidency on the line to fight against galaxy. But the question is, he is not the only person that can help you fight in galaxy. That's why we need a collective responsibility. That something has also set a pace for every all the chiefs or the traditional rulers to follow. The question is, are they willing to do that? Again, today we have Gallam stock. Mm. That's helped uh, our fights again. That was fighting against Gallam say, burning excavators and the rest. What happened? We, the same Ghanaians were complaining that ah, why are you burning those excavators? Why don't you bring the excavators to the um, MMD, that is the municipal metropolitan district assemblies, to use in working? But the question is, when it goes there, it comes back again to that side, Gallam say side. So the fight by Gallam say or Gallam stock didn't work or didn't have any or oh, didn't yield its results. We had a question from that. The same thing. And the question is, with all the steps which we were being put in place by the president or the executive, the question is, did they yield the results? No. Because the question is, there are people who are uh, residing within this uh, Galamse areas, when they see the soldiers are coming, they go report to the uh, illegal miners so that they flee away. So the question is, when we have a very strong collective responsibility, that is where we all can help in uh, ending this time. And again, for the state of emergency, we all support a call for uh, uh, to declare state of emergency. That is being uh, stipulated in Article 31 of our 1992 Constitution. It's a very good call by some of our so the CSOs, as well as labor organization, and rest. we also support the call. But the question is, are they going to also help? Are they also going to help? Because when you give a call, yes, even though the final say lies in the bosom of the executive, that is the president. But at least, as I said earlier on, the president cannot do this work alone. He needs everybody on board. So I'm also going to help in making sure that this uh, state of emergency that he, they, are, they, are, they want him to declare in according to Article 31, they, also, they will also help in at least reporting and arresting illegal miners. And I will use this opportunity to commend our uh, category FIFA of NJOTV, as well as one or his other colleague, okay, uh, is it Kesper? When he went to a second guard, they were arrested three illegal foreigners mining their water bodies. The question is, they have started. Can all the media houses or journalists also follow? For this fight, it's not one man's approach. It's a collective responsibility. So if you're able to all come on board, at least to help in this fight, it will, be, it will help to end up in a positive impact of which Ghanaians or the citizens will have their life back. Because when our water is being clean, clear from all these illegal miners, yes, even though the mercury or the cyanide in it will not, at least, will not be destroyed, taken away immediately. But at least it's come managed for some time. 
if this illegal mining is being seized or is being ended or is being banned, it can end up. Uh, after all, we as I already see our continue to see this is a collective responsibility. All right. So during your submission, you made a statement which is quite interesting. You said is a collective responsibility, and you cited an example of uh, two local media organizations uh, that actually went to a site and arrested some of the people. But in the first place, if someone may want to know, you know, government is being voted for to take care of the affairs of the country, the illegal mining. You and I know didn't start today. It's something that came gradually. And as it was building, people were shouting. The community folks were talking about it. It was in the media. The media did their bit by exposing it. But the government didn't take any action regarding that. Would you say it is still the responsibility or a collective responsibility, or would you say the government has failed in fighting the Galamse? If you tell me the government of the day didn't do anything with regards to the fight against Galamse, when the media houses and media personnel were calling, mm -hmm. then they have not been fair to the government. As I was saying, when the government or the executive introduced Gallam Strong and the Christian Vanguard, it's as a result of the call from the media house that made Callum Stock and as well as the uh, Operation Vanguard invade into the our forest reserve and banning excavators my, or arresting or uh, illegal mine. So at least the government of the day tried as much as possible to respond to the call from the media houses as well as media personnel. But the question is this. Today, when the Gallam Stock were going to the uh, forest reserves as well as to arrest people, there's the same citizens that will make those illegal miners mine our water bodies or mine in our reserves. What a forest is there, uh, and and that that the soldiers are coming, which will make them flee. So when they when they when the uh, operation vanguard as well as gallop stone, that the soldiers and the rest, when they get it, what they do is they burn excavators, but they are able to arrest them for oh, the recrassions that is the illegal miners. So the question is. The fight, that's why I say, the fight against Galaxy is a collective as well. It's a one man's approach. If it's a one man's approach, at least I'll give, uh, I'll say the government of the day has failed. But if it's a collective responsibility, then I know everybody involved can help in this over. But if it's, if oh, you are trying to tag the government of the day of not doing anything, it will not be fair because it was under this watch, under this illegal mining, or the call for the ban of illegal mining by the media houses as well as journalists that brought in Gallam Stock and Christian Vanguard. If not do, where will Christian Vanguard and Gallam Stock be? So the fight against Gallam Singh, I'll, I'll keep on saying it, it's a collective responsibility. Because if today, the Gallam Stock and Christian Vanguard, when they're entering that to arrest the people and the citizens within that area do not uh, give an alert to the illegal mine, don't you think this issue will not escalate to this level? It will escalate to this level. So please, let's uh, we will we'll keep on who are the government of the day trying to do everything possible. At least it also lies in the bosom of the citizens to have the government because government cannot do everything on its own. That's why when you read our constitution, is that the, our citizens should help the police in at least in joint investigation. So at least the police alone cannot come in when an incident happened in a particular area. The police cannot come and do an investigation that at least getting assistance from the citizens. So that's mm -hmm. that's how the issue was. Right. Uh, Madam Aula, I would come to you. And this time around, during Ebenezer's submission, he said it is not fair for one to say the government has not tried in fighting the illegal mining uh, known as Galamse, the menace in Ghana. And in this case, in your submission again, uh, Ebenezer, you said uh, the government put up some committee and then some certain strategies which did not work. You talk about burning excavators, which of course we all saw that uh, excavators were burnt, yet the thing got worse. It was even after the burning of excavators that the Galamse menace uh, got worse. So, Madam Maula, if I may ask, uh, would someone be unfair to say the government has not bought this menace? You see, when you are in power, unfortunately, you take the good and the bad. When things are going well, you are commended. For example, I commended the government when it came to COVID. They mm. took robust action, and COVID didn't do as much damage in Ghana as it did in other countries. When it comes to Galamse, the facts speak for themselves. Anybody who is not biased and looks at the state of Ghana cannot tell me that the government is doing a fantastic job. Let's be nationalistic for a change and look at what is actually happening. The president himself saw how terrible things were and put his presidency on the line. Mm. 
seven years later, things have gone from bad to worse. Mm. And of course, when he's put his presidency on the line, the um, then aspiring uh, presidential candidate, uh, President Mahama, made some very, in my view, unfortunate comments mm. about uh, Galamse, which I do not think were in the interest of the country. And of course, the NDC did well in the Galamse areas. Now, this, this also, um, I suppose, is why the government is not fighting Galamse as, as robustly as it should. But let me say this. In the fight against Galamse, it appears the firefighters and the arsonists are one. Too many people close to the ruling party are involved in Galamse, and we know this as a fact. One example is um, Akonta Mining. The company is alleged to have been, been involved in destroying parts of the Tano Mimiri Forest Reserve. Media against Galamse and others ask for investigations to be conducted. You said it's a collective fight. If it's collective, then everybody's playing their role. The media took video footage and ask for Akonta mining to be investigated. The bishop, Catholic Bishops Conference also asked what was going on. And the president said he wasn't engaged in illegal mining at that present time because he had been engaged in a, you know, before. But nothing has happened to the directors of Akonta mining. So what message are you sending? You said that the measures didn't work. They didn't work because the firefighters were the arsonists. We had an example in the documentary, I believe, Poison for Gold, where you saw Operation Vanguard going into a forest reserve. They arrested the people who were there. Somebody made a call. Heavily, heavily armed uh, persons came, and they confronted Operation Vanguard or whatever it was, and they even tried to destroy the cameras of Joy because Joy was recording. So when you have a situation like this, what do you think is going to go on? And I can give you an example. I can give you an example when you're talking about collective responsibility. The difficulty right now is that the firefighters and the arsonists are one. That is why we are not get, making much of a headway with uh, the fight against Galamse. Mm. And then um, Parliament has gone and passed LI 2462, which allows mining in forest reserves including globally significant biodiversity areas. Who does that if you're serious about fighting the menace of mining, which is destroying our forests and water bodies? But coming back to what I was saying, we've talked about Akunta mining, where they were accused of um, destroying portions of the Tano Nimiri Forest Reserve. To date, to date, we have not seen the docket to say that this is the investigation that has been carried out. We're going to prosecute all there isn't sufficient evidence. There was photographic footage. There was video footage. Nothing has happened. And we know how closely aligned he is with the current government. Now, you talk about a collective effort. Let me give you an example. In the western north region of Atronsu, they have a beautiful stream, the Atronsu stream. They said they do not want community mining, but it was being pushed down their throats, so the case is in court. Mm. Now, a few weeks ago, they found out that excavators were approaching the landscape. They didn't stand idly by. They did something about it. I personally contacted the Western North Regional Minister, Honorable Richard, also known as Rocky Obeying. I contacted him and informed him. The excavators reached the landscape, destroyed cocoa farms, and have now poisoned the once pristine Atronso stream. I can show you the footage of what it looked like before the excavators went there and what it looks like now. We contacted the EPA. The mayhem still continued. It wasn't after a bit of effort, and we got the, the commander, the police commander, and he has now stopped it. But the point I'm trying to make is that what was the regional minister doing? What was the district um, um, MC, what was he doing? And all this happened. We made reports. And yes, in some areas, it's working. Like in Gemma, for instance, the chief has said, I do not want any form of mining there. And so far, it's working. So yes, when the chiefs join, it works. But you talked about the As Asantehini distilling three chiefs. There's still a lot of illegal mining going on in Asante. So it's still going on. So what we need is for the government in the government to take robust action and to stop its own um, functionaries from engaging in illegal mining and deal with them. If, for example, in your area, there's illegal mining going on, as in a Trump suit, that regional minister should be called and asked why, what steps he took. He has access to national security. The Atronsu community could not arrest the illegal miners because they were armed. Now, you look at a case in Assemble where the, they, they took their responsibility seriously. 
The constitution asked us all to safeguard and protect the environment. They arrested the illegal miners. In the end, those who effected the arrest, they themselves were charged. And it took us a long time to have this matter uh, um, dealt with. So what I'm trying to say is that it's very easy to say we should all be involved, which is true. But at the end of the day, the voluntary organizations, UTAG, trade unions, we don't have any control over the security agents. So if armed uh, persons are involved in illegal mining and you refuse to use the state apparatus to deal with them, I'm afraid we have a challenge. So at this stage, let's all forget about party affiliation and realize that we face a clear and present danger. We are being poisoned. The food chain has been contaminated. When we are consuming our tubers and our corn and so on and so forth, do we know whether or not they are laced with mercury? The time has come to be serious about what is going on and to acknowledge that because the firefighters are the arsonists, it has been very challenging to deal with illegal money. And let me end by saying that if you are a resolute government and you believe that burning excavators is key, it doesn't matter what people say. You do what you know is right because you were elected. And when you are elected, you do what you can to protect the country. All right. Uh, so now let's look at the uh, involvement of politically exposed uh, persons. Let me, let, me, let me just respond to one or two statements which been, were being raised by my mother. Right, right. She thinks you call the regime minister that is the resting of the regime minister, that is horrible. Rock, is it rock, rock, as it is. When I was complaining, it was the police commander that helped in ending this mayhem. That is the Kanka, right? Again, the regime minister is the chairman of the regional security council. And the regional minister cannot work alone without having or having all the or security car, or security bodies with him. So if today the police commander has been able to solve this issue in that particular area, it's as a result of that collective response, response by the, or either the regional security council or the municipal or district security council in that particular district or municipality in which he may have was being caused. So today, when you are giving the praise to the police commander, you should also give the praise to the security council or the security council in that particular municipality or district or region. And again, she also said, uh, this government's fashionaries are engaged in illegal mining and what have been done to them. Well, in this country, my current, my regional national women's organization, wasn't it? they went and invaded his society, which had a language. She has obtained lances, they burn her excavator. This shows that the government of the day was not in Has she been that. arrested and prosecuted? Has she been arrested? Please, 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 please. please. She, oh, she has a lances to, to do the work. But not to and engage so, in illegal mining. She so never engaged. And why were her excavators burnt? Good. When they went, when they went to the site, they thought she was she engaged in what they call illegal mining. And she went to court and oh, the, oh, the court gave a reason that when the court saw her analysis and everything, they said, no, she doesn't engage in illegal mining. That's what they said. She can go back again and do her mind. And she doesn't go mind in uh, what they call, uh, water bodies. And again, I could tell my leaders, my original Asante Regional Chairman, it was NDC that started, well, took her, just started at least engaging him in saying that he was engaged in illegal mining. But what did they do? SYC government do? They went to court. When they went to court, what happened? Today, during the Ghana Bar Association program in Kumasi, that's the annual conference in Kumasi, the Minister for Justice and Attorney General gave a, oh, at least a brief of what has happened in a fight against Galamsey. The number of people that have been arrested and convicted, and the number of cases which is currently before the court. He was able to outline all those things. And today, the question is this. Today, if I'm able to say it's a collective responsibility, I mean, it's a collective responsibility because today, after you reporting to the regional minister, what do you also do? Did he also help? It's not just over about only reporting. It's also about also trying to do something about it. But if you report and you don't also help, how would this fight end? That's what we say. It's a collective responsibility. We mean it's a collective responsibility. Because Being today, respect, you... but I think it's very unfair to say that what did the community do? The community started reporting it before the excavators actually reached the last day. I personally contacted the regional minister and I know the response I got. I can show you the, the, the WhatsApp messages. And then later on, we also contacted the commander. I know the number of times we had to contact him and we thank God that something has been done about it. So the residents have taken the video footage so that you can see what the stream was before the, the adventure and what it is now. They did everything they could. They went onto the radio. They did everything. What could they do when they were not armed and the illegal miners were armed? But 
You see, as I was saying, yes, today, the question is, when I, I'm, I'm certain that the people within that area that you complain to the regional minister, some of them are involved in that act. I'm not, it's, it's, an, it's not a, a, a factual statement because I don't reside over there. But at least, you cannot say that it's the, the people who reside in that particular area or community, none of them are involved in that act. You see, let's let's be very let's give credit to how much is due. For that one who has said that yes, the president of the day put his presidency on the line to fight against galaxy. But today, how will you show, see how will you show that you have put you have put in an effort to stop a canker? But you get somebody trying to help in promoting this canker. How will you show? Do you think your, the fight against that canker will be will be successful? I quite remember your own one of your own uh, what is it? Um, colleague Manasi Azu made a statement. When you read or go to uh, Ghana World, you promised to promote Galamsi if you want to do it. And there are videos, there are videos of uh, some former uh, political opponent trying to help uh, at least encouraging them to vote for their people. So that when they can to be able to continue what I'm saying. At that time, the president of the day has been able to put his presidency on the line to fight what I'm saying. But we have to get opponents, opposition party, helping to say that, yes, vote for us. When you vote for us, to be able to, so how can this fight, uh, this fight against what I'm saying? Seems? That's why I said, the fight against what I'm saying is not one man's approach. Because you may do everything possible to help the fight. But you'll be getting people trying to help you so that you oh, make your work very difficult for you. So how can this work be successful? It can be successful. Because when you read when you read this, the Minerals and Miners Act, Minerals Amendment Act 2019, Act 995, Section 99, it gives out straight sentencing regime for fairness of Kalamse. It is stated over there. And those people, those oh, no, oh, number of people who have been convicted and jailed, which were being oh, given out by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General, when they all passed through this oh, straight oh, measures. But the question is this we, we had a former president telling us that all those people who are involved, who have been arrested and jailed, arrested and jailed, what it comes to give an amnesty, at least so that they will be released. So the question is how can we be able to end this kind of oh, mayor or no, we can't. Have. Interesting points raised. Uh, we will take a quick break, uh, but when we return, we will dive deeper into the debate on whether a state of emergency is the best way forward to combat Galamsey. Stay with us. You are listening to West Africa Now on WAVN.org. Follow us at WAVN News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok for updates. West African Voice Network. Amplifying voices, inspiring change. Welcome back to West Africa Now. If you are just joining us, we are discussing the fight against illegal mining in Ghana and whether the calls for a state of emergency are warranted. Before the break, we had some key points from our guest. Let's continue the discussion. Yes, please. You have made yeah. so much. You have talked so much about it's a collective responsibility. It's a collective responsibility. But now, as a Ghanaian, let's just put politics aside, like taking off the NPP flag of you. Just look at the current situation. You made a statement also that the president uh, said he's going to put his presidency on the line to ensure that the Galamse is stopped. And here is the case. This government has two terms. So... Looking at what has happened or looking at the current situation in Ghana as far as illegal mining is concerned, would you say that the government has, the president has fulfilled his promise of putting his presidency on the line to ensure that Galamse is kept out of Ghana? Thank you very much for this question. And it, this issue is very, very simple. Mm. It's very, very simple. The president, the president put his presidency on the line. To so did Galamsey. he really put his presidency on the line when this is still going on? Can you say boldly, say that the president really put his presidency on the line? Looking at the current situation in Ghana, where some people don't even have good water to drink from, especially those in the rural communities. Did he really put his presidency on the line? Because look, you know what? when you look at you know the West, when you look at, let me give you an example so that you would make this assessment. When you look at the West, I will give you an example of the former prime minister of uh, New Zealand. You know what? She resigned from her office because she felt like she was not doing right. 
she feels like she's not serving the people right because some things are wrong. And then we have the Prime Minister of Hungary who also resigned from office just because she gave a pardon to a prisoner who is a rapist. She didn't even know. So after she discovered that he was a rapist, that she gave a presidential pardon, then she has to resign because she feels she has failed the people. So are we are we experiencing the same thing in Ghana? Because the president said he's going to put his presidency on the line. But now, things have gone from bad to worse during his administration. So would you say, that is why I said, take off the MPP flag, take off the party flag, and now talk as a citizen. Did he really do it? I'm not putting, I'm not putting on a party, I'm not putting on a party flag on this issue. I'm not putting on a party flag. But the question is this. You're making a comparison about the West. There are laws on the approach to issues may be different from that of Africa. No, it can be different. You know, that we there is nothing different. One thing you should know is that there's nothing different about a government coming in power saying, I want to do this, and then they are doing something different, or they are not able to achieve it. Because so what I'm trying to, the picture I'm trying to paint here is that ideally, Michael, if a government, see, if somebody see. refuses or cannot be able to achieve what they say they want to achieve, is to resign for the person who can do it to come. That is how, that is simple. That is what the, the, the examples I've cited for you. That is what it means. I, I, it's not like I, I, they have I, a different constitution that makes them. They can the stay. They could have chosen I to stay, but point. they refused. They were not forced. I get your point. Mm -hmm. I get your point. I get your point. But you see, when, after he plays his president, that was where Gallup stopped and the Kushita guide, Vanguard, entered into a rep or whatever. So did, yeah, this operation Vanguard, I think you mentioned it earlier, and you even acknowledged that it didn't work out, that it's the collective responsibility, the media and everybody should come. Well, the media has played its role. The people in the committee have played their role. When you listen to Madam Sewa, she, she as an advocate, has also played a role. But there is a limit to what everybody can do. He has the final power. He can, he can stop it. has been able to do that. That is what we are looking no, at. No, 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 no. no. If you tell us everybody has, yes, everybody has his limit. But mm -hmm. today, okay, the people left Accra to our center, go to arrest the Chinese, mm -hmm. took them to the police station. Yeah, you get it. Mm -hmm. Angel FM and UTV left Accra, went to the Western region, arrest three Chinese who are engaged in the illegal mining. Tell them, say, who are destroying our water policy. So, what has, what has become? What has become of them? What has become of them? So now, if if a free fire that you mentioned has been able to arrest, then it means the government, then it means the president can say, do you know that? Wait, in case you don't know, do you know that the government can wake up today and say everybody should go to sleep at six o'clock and everybody will go to sleep? The whole Ghana. Exactly. So it's the same way the government can say, I want to put a stop to it, and it will be done immediately. If he says every mining site should be shut down within 24 hours, that can be done. So now the question is, has he been able to put his, did he, did he really put his presidency on the line to ensure that this has changed, or he put his presidency on the line to ensure that it's even worse? So uh, I, in this question, I ask the man. Mm. Yes, we know perfectly well that to invoke Article 31, mm. right? To invoke Article 31, that is to declare, there's a, there's a Article 31 clause 4. They said the president may, acting according to the advice of the Council of State, mm. by proclamation, published in a gazette, declare that, that a state of emergency exists in the country, in Ghana, or in a part of the country for the purpose of the provision of this constitution. Let me use this example COVID 19. When COVID 19 came, mm -hmm. when it came, I'm coming, I'm coming, when it came, the president will straight away declare a state of emergency in mm -hmm. some parts of the country. When it came, the president will straight away declare a state of emergency in some parts of the country. It was very after he saw one or two issues or one or two problematic issues that came up, that was whereby he declared a state of emergency. And today, to declare a state of emergency, you also need to understand that you need to put up certain you know, alternative mechanism because you are making people to go and sleep, to be indoor. What is the necessary mechanism, alternative mechanism you are going to put up? It's another factor we need to also, the government today need to think about it. That's what I was saying. I applaud the CSOs as well as other bodies calling for a state of emergency. 100% Professor Adair and Kenneth Ashibri. I salute them for that good job, one job they did. But the question is, you are, yes, the president can declare a state of medicine or can invoke as a contest one plus one. But the question is, at least, there must be an, 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 an alternative mechanism. That is job creation. When you read the statement they brought up, Professor Adair 
would give a lot of me oh, mechanisms that should be put in place. He said what? He said what? Government needs to provide alternative livelihood for employed, unemployed youth and get in. Can I come in? You can come in, Madam Sarah. You see, I'm getting a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with a life and death situation. Right. When you put your presidency on the line, mm -hmm. it means that. You are not, it doesn't matter what other people say. Even if the um, aspiring presidential candidate makes irresponsible statements like those made, you are resolute. I put my presidency on the line. I'm going to ensure that uh, illegal mining stops, but then I'm going. And it has gone from bad to worse. I accept that the, the comments that President Mahama made were, in my opinion, irresponsible. But be that as it may, you are the president. You put your presidency on the line. You are resolute. And for anybody to argue that you can still be there when obviously things have gone from bad to worse, I find very, um, I can't even find the words. Now, let's be absolutely clear. It's a life and death matter. You are talking about livelihoods. As we speak, the fishermen are losing their livelihood. The farmers are losing their livelihood. Ghanaians are being poisoned. This is not a time to dilly-dally. We've had seven years where it's gone from bad to worse. So what you do now is that you declare the state of emergency. In the meantime, as you declare the state of emergency, you can look at for other things that people engaged in illegal mining can do. People are engaged in armed robbery as we speak. That's their livelihood. Are you going to say that until you find them alternative employment, they should engage in armed robbery? Of course not. And then let me be also very clear about um, the mining. The fact that you've got a license doesn't mean that everything you do is legal. As Professor Boateng said in his, Frimpon Boateng said in the report, even if you're engaged, you've got a license, but you go outside the parameters of your license, you're engaged in illegal mining. So if um, persons have licenses, it doesn't mean they can just go and mine. You need an EPA permit. You also need a digging license. You don't have those who are engaged in illegal mining. And I think that we are being very, um, I don't know what how to find the word. This is an emergency situation. Declare a state of emergency. Stop every, remove everybody from our forest reserves and the um, water bodies. Revoke LI2462. Pause community mining because you're incapable of monitoring. When we found out the Atronso stream was being poisoned, we contacted the EPA. What were they doing? You know, you, they have enforcement powers. Did they use them when they knew the river was, the stream was being poisoned? So because our regulatory um, bodies are weak, we are allergic to enforcement. You cannot have so many community mining operators around. It's a recipe for disaster. You know, people foresaw it before the proper use of galamse was come and gather. People engaged in galamse they were not using heavy duty machinery. They didn't have excavators. So they could not cause the kind of damage that is being caused. When we're going to start community mining or small scale mining, people with foresight said, this is going to cause a disaster. You're not going to be able to monitor them. Even the big ones, you can't monitor that. We didn't listen to reason. We decided to go ahead because we wanted to provide jobs. Now, what you are doing is providing death. You are providing death because we are all being poisoned. And when you talk about livelihood, they are, the farmers are losing their livelihood. I mean, it's a non-starter. You stop it, and once you stop it, you can look at whether you can find alternative means. In any case, in any case, as has already been said, the forest, just having the forest intact, you can get money out of it. But destroying the forest when you go on and put it forward as carbon sinks is just not right. So I think I've gone on for long enough. We are not interested in solving the problem. This is not the time for conversations. This is the time for action. And the collective have come together. Mm. CSOs, including eco-conscious citizens, the GMA, UTAD, Catholic Bishops Conference, Christian Council. What are you waiting for? Right. So talk about what are you waiting for? Uh, Ebenezer, that brings me back to you again. Yeah, talk about what the government is waiting for. You mentioned that the government needs uh, time to talk to people. You think of COVID. How long did it take the government? Look at the space. You said he needs time. So, and this government has been there for seven years now. He's almost, he's, he's 
his term is already uh, coming to an end in some few months. So how long? Did he need 10 years or 20 years to be able to finish meeting with the uh, elders to be able to declare a state of emergency? Because this, like Madam Sewa said, is causing death. People are dying. Even you in your early submission uh, admitted that this is poisonous and is causing a lot of harm in the country. And again, what so, in your, so, so now, what do you think the government can do now to stop this menace? What a, what a government can do, as I already said, I said I applaud the CSOs as well as all other bodies that were calling for the government of the day to declare state of emergency. I applaud them. And I think the, or the president calling for a state of emergency is in the right direction. Nobody is trying to say we don't endorse the president calling for a state of emergency. But you see, to invoke, right, that Article 31, which is an entrenched provision, it's not straight to me, it's just not straight that we or put up a state, declare a state of emergency. If there are processes you need to go through. That's what when you read Article 31. It isn't uh, the president can kind of straight away. There are processes you have to go through. At least with the court, I'm sure the president is meeting with the, or waiting for waiting for meeting with his council of state for advice on what to do. That is whereby he started with this ad hoc committee, five member or members of the ad hoc committee. All the, it's a process. And again, all telling lances, at least you go through all the process, required process, forestry commission, EP and the rest, you go through all this process. Obtaining lances, it's not just a straightforward approach. It's a process. So it's in it, the claim a state of oh, emergency. It's not just uh, straight away. I declare oh, uh, was it the Western North region a state of emergency. Everybody should leave. No, it's a process. Right. It's not just straight away, waking up, waking up and going to do that. After the CSOs and other bodies were calling for the government of the day to declare state of emergency, the government of the day has heeded to their call. That is why he has started with the process that will first try to put up an ad hoc committee to on this issue. And I'm sure it's a process. I'm sure we'll be able to solve or declare the state of emergency very soon. So that's what I would say. The people of Canada should at least expect a state of emergency very soon. Thank you. All right. So, Madam. Uh... There were your final take. What do you think the government can do to put a stop? The government can do what has been proposed collectively. As I said, it's not just one organization. Mm. CSOs, including ourselves. You have the Catholic Bishops Conference. You have the um, a Christian Council. You have Utah. You have Ghana Medical Association. You have um, organized labor. And so many of them, I can't list them all. Everybody has said one thing. And we need to do it. Government needs to realize that it's the government's they are the ones in charge, and the buck stops with them. Yes, we are, it's a collective effort, but the buck stops with them. I don't have um, um, the powers to uh, start uh, prosecutions. I can only do civil action. I can't start a prosecution. Right. So what we are saying is that if you really want to, you can speed up the process for declaring a state of um, emergency. I talked about when we had COVID and we had the lockdown. It was well done, and we commend the government for that. But what is happening with illegal mining is not very good. It's We're acting slowly. We've had seven years to deal with it, and we have not been able to do it because the firefighters and the arsonists are sometimes one and the same. What we are saying is that declare the state of emergency, go to the forest reserves, get everybody and all the machinery away from there and the water bodies. We have to revoke LI 2462, which is a perverse piece of legislation because it allows for logging and mining in forest reserves, including globally significant biodiversity area. And it's not negotiable. Stop the community small scale mining because we're not able to enforce, regulate. Even the big companies, we're not able to monitor them well. They have thousands of small scale miners. You can't um, regulate, you can't enforce. The EPA and other regulatory bodies are finding it difficult to enforce. Generally, as a country, we are allergic to enforcement. And then you cannot say you're waiting for them to have a, uh, another livelihood. Let's be clear. Farmers are losing their livelihood. Fishermen are losing their livelihood. We are all being poisoned. Mm. So I think we should realize that with what we are doing, we're going to have more and more funerals. If you don't want that, do what we have all asked you to do. Declare the state of emergency and uh, remove everybody from our forest and water bodies. Revoke LI 2462 and pause community mining. That will go a long way towards repairing this canker. Right. Uh, thank you, lady and gentleman, for your time on the program. It's been amazing. No, thank you for your interest in this matter. We face an existential threat. Thank you very much. Right.
As we wrap up today's conversation, it's clear that this issue requires urgent attention and decisive action. Illegal mining is left unchecked, threatens not just Ghana's environment, but the livelihoods of future generations. Thank you, lady and gentlemen, for your time on the program. And to you, our listeners, thank you for tuning in, not forgetting my colleagues for their contributions. Join us again next Saturday for another edition of West Africa Now as we bring you more on the burning issues across our sub-region. Until then, this is Tofik Abdel Nasser. Stay informed, stay engaged.